Growing up, I always thought that a testimony had to have like this obvious point of sin and then Jesus comes into your life and then your life is different. And I always felt like my testimony wasn't good enough because it didn't follow that formula. I was born and raised in the church. I am the firstborn of three girls. I am the firstborn grandchild on both sides. And whether it's birth order or something else, I am a perfectionist. Enneagram one, whatever, I am a perfectionist. And that means that my sins are not necessarily obvious. I'm more the Pharisee type, which obviously, according to Jesus, that's a sin too. Um, and my passion is to love or to learn. I love, love, love learning. I spend most of my free time learning. I could probably hold my own with anybody who has not gone to seminary and maybe even some who have gone to seminary in discussion of Bible trivia or theology or what's in the Bible because I love to learn. And the problem is the more you learn, the more you realize that you're not gonna be good enough. Um, the more you know, the more you can do better, but the more you realize that you haven't done enough. And when we come to church on Sundays, we always hear that you are loved, you are valued, you are forgiven. And that is despite not living up to perfection. Um, growing up with that message all around me, it's easy, it was easy for me to apply that to others. In my nursing career, I have taken care of uh, prisoners, criminals, murderers, uh, child abusers, victims of human trafficking, people who are high on drugs, people who are um, wasted with alcohol, people who are mental health in mental health crises, uh, people who are really, really, really mean, and also some really, really nice patients. But it was always fairly easy for me to see that God's love and forgiveness applied to them because that's what I know. I know deep in my heart that every single person is loved and valued. Every single person has forgiveness already paid for. It's available to them. But it's not always easy for me to apply that to myself. Um, Ephesians 2 says, by grace you have been saved. It is a gift. And then the next sentence talks about how we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we could walk in them. And I know God has given me works. God has given me gifts and talents and abilities to use to serve others to glorify him. So then I start to use my gifts and talents and abilities and my thinking starts to twist and then I start to think that I have to be perfect in order to do this good work that God has prepared for me and then I'm not perfect and so then I feel that failure and I feel it deeply and then I circle back to God's gift. It's not something that I can earn and then we come to church and we hear again that you, every single person that includes me, you are valued, you are loved, you are forgiven. And then at the end of the church service, we hear the words first recorded um, in Numbers that Aaron spoke over the Israelites. And I'm always reminded that God does the verbs. When you sit there and you hear that blessing when it is poured over you, there's nothing that you have to do to earn that blessing. It's all God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace.